Full Frontal, I am Samantha B. Yesterday, the devastated island of Puerto Rico was hit by a Category 5 tsunami of self-congratulation. I know you appreciate our support, because uh, our country's really gone all out to help. Your governor, he was giving us the highest grades. We've saved a lot of lives. A real catastrophe like Katrina, and you look at the tremendous hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that died. What is your death count as of this moment? 16 people versus in the thousands. The lowest score doesn't win, doofus. A hurricane is not a golf game or an election. But if the president... But if the president has been treating these citizens worse than these citizens, so have the rest of us. Here's the New York Times front page after Hurricane Harvey. Here's the Times after Irma. And this is the day after Maria where, oh my God, it's below the fold in one of their least urgent fonts. I've seen bigger headlines in the Sunday styles. <laughs> if you're shocked by this, then you are not Puerto Rican. Truth is, we've been treating them like the unwelcome nephew under America's stairs for more than a century. I should think you'd be a little more grateful. We've raised you since you were a baby, given you the food of our table, purely out of the goodness of our hearts. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Come on, Mayor, just say Expelliarmus. You know you want to. <laughs> Puerto Ricans taught us our own history. It's only fair we learned something about theirs, so here goes. This is an island surrounded by water. Big water, ocean water. Ugh, stop! Can we get an actual Puerto Rican to tell this story? At your service. For 400 years, Puerto Rico was a Spanish colony until 1897 when Spain granted them autonomy. In July 1898, they formed their own elected government. Eight days later, the U.S. invaded. The island was now a football in the Spanish-American War, a conflict fueled partly by fake news and the yellow press. When it was over, Puerto Ricans were told they belonged to America. The next year, they were slammed by a hurricane. The U.S. didn't send much aid, so that's familiar. Instead, it devalued the Puerto Rican peso, diminishing every Puerto Rican's wealth by 40% overnight and forcing farmers to take loans so predatory that in 10 years, U.S. banks and sugar companies owned the majority of Puerto Rican land. Damn. You know, this would make a really good musical. In 1917, the U.S. granted Puerto Ricans American citizenship, just in time to fight in World War I. Mierda. And so began Puerto Rico's 100-year history of getting screwed with their pantalones on by the United States. Thank you, Cartoon Javier. The average income of Puerto Ricans is $15,000, less than half of Mississippi's. Go on, Mississippi, have your moment. <laughs> we ain't last, we're rich. Hell yeah. Meanwhile, food in Puerto Rico costs twice as much as it does in Florida because of an obscure little shakedown known as the Jones Act, which is as unfamiliar to most Americans as it clearly is to my graphics department. The Jones Act passed in 1920 after World War I to protect the U.S. shipping industry. It requires all trade between U.S. ports be done on U.S. merchant ships built in the U.S., and manned by American sailors. It also mandates that each boat be crewed by a Native American, a construction worker, a cowboy, and a stripper, which is a very expensive mandate, especially for Puerto Rico, where all necessities come in by boat. Why is that again? This is an island <laughs> surrounded by water, big water. Here's another thing that's not Trump's fault. Operation Bootstrap, a tax haven scheme that started back when Donald was one year old and just beginning to discover his passions. Operation Bootstrap gave tax advantages to companies that would locate in Puerto Rico in 1976. They, there was another tax law passed that allowed companies to repatriate earnings tax-free. As a result, manufacturing flooded into Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rican dollars flooded back into the United States to businesses that had no stake in the island's long-term success. So when Bill Clinton cheated the companies out of those tax breaks, they did what any self-respecting partner would do. They packed their bags and walked out the goddamn door. By 2006, the credits were phased out. And as soon as they were all phased out, the company split. The manufacturing jobs, the pharmaceutical jobs left the island. Leaving the Puerto Rican economy to be solely based on sexy barbers and dancing in the street. 
Soon after the manufacturing exodus, the global economy imploded. Also our fault. We are not coming off well in this story. I'm sorry. <laughs> Puerto Rico's economy has never recovered. And right now, half the population still doesn't have drinking water to soak up with all those free paper towels POTUS chucked at them <laughs> before declaring mission accomplished. Hooray for me! Look, he's done his part. The rest, I guess, is up to us. Fortunately, a friend of mine told me how to help through a great organization called the Hispanic Federation. You can donate online or call 866 hf Ayuda. Operators are standing by. Thank you for calling Hispanic Federation. This is Javier. Uh, for English, press one. Para Español, oprime el dos. They're both me. <laughs> huh? Oh, a uh, shirt and pants. Why? What are you wearing? We'll be right back. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually really busy most nights. Yeah.